So number two, uh, number two is essentially the same question, but for a different scenario. So designing a large single story manufacturing building um, for the air supply, uh, you would probably use A, and then pretty much the same answers, central air handling unit, individual fan coil units, central chiller, chilled water loop, DX rooftop units. Um, so all of those same reasons that, uh, that we talked about before, uh, this is actually the one where the DX unit on the rooftop is probably gonna make a lot of sense. This is gonna be the one where if I have that great big building uh, and it's a uh, big single story space and I know that I've got uh, you know, various things, oops, <laughs> Uh, various things happening in, in different locations, certain kinds of warehousing, certain kinds of manufacturing, various other things. Uh, this would be a really easy place to just place right up on that roof uh, a big self-contained DX unit. Maybe I have a couple of them, uh, so uh, you could have a different one over the warehouse area than compared to the manufacturing area. You're just going to be blowing in a large volume of air. You're going to be taking in the return at the same spot. It's going to have the refrigerant built into it. It's going to have its heat rejection uh, possibilities built into it. Uh, and in this way, you know, the manufacturing processes change pretty readily. Uh, the idea that you could fairly simply, say 10 years down the road, realize that uh, we're gonna start manufacturing in a slightly different way, let's move it uh, uh, 50 feet over. You could lift it up and move it and change it around. Um, this is a, a very flexible, manipulable system uh, that seems to fit to the single story uh, manufacturing use. Now, with a DX unit, you can certainly add quite a bit of, uh, you know, controlling ductwork and all of that to it. Um, but, you know, one of the nice things about these rooftop units, you can also just kind of dump in a lot of air. And if I have enough ceiling height, it, uh, it will spread reasonably quickly and easily. So uh, for all the reasons um, that the central chiller and chilled loop water kind of uh, system uh, that we talked about in the previous question, for all the reasons that was a good idea for, for those. For this one, it seems actually kind of in the way. Uh, it's probably just easier and better to have these uh, kind of cheaper, faster things that I can put up on the roof uh, and just kind of get something straight out of it. I have two questions. Yeah. The first one is, um, uh, what does DX stand for? Good question. I was just about to get to that, but all right, good question. So DX, um, a DX system, uh, so what we, what we were looking at in the previous question, I'm gonna, sorry, it's gonna take a second, I'm just gonna go back for a quick second. What we were looking at in the previous question was a chiller, and that chiller had a refrigerant loop, uh, and then it went uh, onto two barrels, and this was all part of the chiller. And it created a cold water loop that went up and gave the chilled water to the air handling units, wherever they were, anywhere around the building. And then the air handling units have what's referred to as the air side loop. Not everybody calls them loops. I call them loops because I think it's the clearest way to think of it. Um, and so the air handling loop blows air out into the space after it's been conditioned and then takes air back in through the return. And so it, it's its own loop. The chilled water is its own loop and then the heat rejection on the other side of the other barrel is its own loop. So this is a four loop system. Got the, ref the refrigerant is one, the chilled water is two, the air is three, and the heat rejection oop, <laughs> is four. So I've got four loops. A DX system is one where I don't use the chilled water loop. So I have the other ones, I still have the air side loop, I still have the refrigerant loop, I still have the heat rejection loop in some form, uh, but I don't need to have the chilled water because I'm not taking the cooling and moving it around the building, I'm just having the, the, that uh, DX unit up on the roof there is gonna be a great big box, and it's gonna have within it uh, a fan, a coil, And that coil is gonna have uh, from uh, a refrigerant loop happening 
it's that refrigerant loop is gonna go and feed that coil directly and then it's gonna go back in. So the refrigerant is getting, is getting cooled uh, and then uh, by the process of the refrigerant getting cooled, I am then blowing the fan directly across it. It's blowing the air down into the building. And then I have right above that uh, element uh, in, in the same box, I have this device that is, has another fan. It's not always a fan, but I mean, let's just say it's a fan for our purposes here. And it's gonna be taking the excess heat that was created and blowing it right out of, the, of uh, that big box. So it has its own very tight, small heat rejection loop. It has its own uh, uh, refrigerant loop creating the, the coolness on the one side and the hot on the other, and the hot gets rejected out and the cool gets moved over to the coil and we then blow the fan right across it and go straight down into the building. So a DX refers to direct exchange um, uh, or direct expansion. Um, typically direct expansion is the more technical term. Sometimes you'll see direct exchange used uh, and it's uh, where you're using the refrigerant itself in the coil uh, for the air handling unit. Mm -hmm.